name is Katie Doyle. I'm a graphic designer and illustrator and I am white and that is relevant today because we're going to be talking about decolonizing design. So that is relevant like I said because I don't really know much about it. I'm going to start with a quote from decolonizing design group who I highly recommend like if you take anything away from this video it's look into them because they know their stuff. Um, but I'm going to start with a quote from them. So, coloniality is not an abstract concept, nor is it a subject to be examined from a comfortable distance. It is something that affects our communities, our countries, and our peoples every single day. It is a continuous process of domination and violence to which we are submitted. It demeans our knowledge, subjugates our bodies, and renders our lives arduous. For us, decolonization is imperative for survival. The reason we're talking about this today is because of that. We overlook, I think, that colonization is still a very real reality for many people, and it is still something that they have to deal with every single day. And so if we can make that not be the case, that's what we should be striving to do. Now, something I basically took away from my research into the subject is that I don't know a lot about this and that it's really hard to know a lot about it because colonization is so different for so many different people and it depends on where you live. For example, the realities of even someone from Canada, an indigenous person in Canada and a black person in America, which are two very like, you know, you would think like not that insanely different countries because they're not the realities of colonization for these two people are very different so it's really hard looking forward to think oh what exactly is decolonization going to look like because it's going to be different for a black person in america and an indigenous person in canada and an indigenous person in australia and a person from india like those are very distinct uh, realities for them based on how they were colonized and how colonization affected them. For example, England, a white person in England, their reality is going to be very different and the way they look at colonization is very different and so they need to work on decolonization in a very different way. So basically what you can take from this, this is not going to be a step-by-step -step guide to decolonizing design because there are even theories of thought that you can't decolonize design because it is so intertwined with colonization and that if we tried to decolonize it, um, it would completely just everything about it would crumble. But to make things a little bit easier for you, I will get into what exactly colonization and decolonization is. So um, colonization was and still is to this day the power of a certain country um, or certain people that would come to another place and they would basically take over the land um, but that bled into the culture and that bled into the loss of culture and the loss of land and the loss of languages and you know their design practices as they were forced to assimilate and to adapt to this new reality. Literally, decolonization means uh, to become self-governing, to be freed from a colonial power. So decolonization of design specifically is about breaking these links that we have to colonization and to these, you know, Eurocentric, white, Northwestern globally, that type of thinking that we have passed along into you know, every aspect, it touches every aspect of our society. Design is the sum of the resources colonizers put into it. And obviously you're, you know, it's not like, oh, the original people that colonized this land put resources into it. But people to this day are still perpetuating and putting resources into keeping design in the way it was meant to be. That means that design as we know it is a result of colonization. So this appears in how we design, what we design, where we design, who designs what. Um, all these things have been established by colonizers and need to be broken. Decolonizing design requires a transformation of political, 
economic institutional conditions and that way we can view design in a new light so the whole goal is to give you know these marginalized uh, vulnerable people who have had their culture and had their voices taken away from them giving them that self-determination and giving them that opportunity to you know it's not it's not quite about bringing things to these pre-colonial times it is more about looking at the present and it having the colonial effects still embedded in them and looking towards a new future without that and how can we get to there and the thing is it's not really a there like there is no time that we will ever be like oh we're fully decolonized it is a process and so we are always needing to give into that process and work on that process what i think is the best course in action um which is to decolonize design i think you have to literally decolonize the world and doing that i think you know i can't get into that in one short video that's trying to discuss decolonization of design because that's a whole other thing but i would encourage you to look into um land back but I will say like basically the gist of that is literally giving the land back to indigenous peoples, giving them the literal sovereignty. Like this is not a metaphor. This is a literal thing that can be done and should be done by our governments. I'm going to list some actions that people, they often think of and associate with decolonization. Whether or not they actually are decolonization I will get into. I just want to say like decolonization is a process. It is not a common order process. It is not an easy process. Um, it's basically just a disruption of the status quo. So these are more like small actions and they're not decolonization in and of itself. They're just small actions. So the first idea that I'm going to touch on is informing yourself. And that is similar to what I touched on in my last video is that it's always better to come from a place of informed, you know, knowledge rather than a place of ignorance. So we need to look at how has harm been done that we benefit from and have you personally done harm and have you exploited the labor of a marginalized person? Have you appropriated a culture's design and how can you atone for that? So an important thing to note is that everything that I'm going to say in this video has been said before and everything that you will learn has been done by, I mean, I know a lot of people don't like this acronym, but like BIPOC. If you're learning, you need to recognize that all of this labor and all of this knowledge is coming from people of color. And it's important to recognize that because they are so often not recognized for their work. So the next one is kind of tough that um, it is obviously a good thing that we should be doing, but I think it's been too closely paired with decolonization. And I think a lot of people think that if we do this, which I will get into, it's diverse hiring, um, that doing that equals decolonization of the workplace or whatever. And that's not the case, but diverse hiring is good. You should be hiring people from a diverse backgrounds and races. And this is also included in teachers. Getting people from diverse backgrounds is going to get you more diverse perspectives, practices. Um, it yields more interesting work. Uh, and when you do this, you also want to ensure that you are creating a space that is conducive to work for these people and it's accepting and not, you know, so many design places, they are very white coated. And so you need to create a space that is, you know, accepting of people of color. So the problem with that is not so much a problem of diverse hiring, but it is a problem of colonization is that when you're in you know hiring someone into you know the workplace it is still 
working within a white Eurocentric, like a um, Euro American place. And it still exists with these, you know, these ideas and these structures. And it's the idea of that you're inviting people into these places and that it gives the person inviting power. And they do have power and they have the power to invite diverse voices into this space. But the thing is, it's not decolonizing if it's still existing in that colonized space. Now that specifically that idea comes from um, Dory Turnstall and she's the Dean of Design at OCAD University in Toronto and she very much focuses on decolonizing design. And basically she's saying that under a decolonized system or like when you're decolonizing it wouldn't be this power imbalance of someone does the inviting into this new place. Um, it would be that both sides have equal power and it's the redistribution of power. Here's the thing. I know so many people who are white, they get very concerned about when you talk about the power imbalances and you talk about, oh, we're giving them power and it feels like we're giving them power over us. And the thing is, is the goal of it is not so much, well, it's not, it's not that we're giving people power over us, white people, it's that we're giving them some of our power, so we are losing some power, because we have an insane amount of power, and we shouldn't have that much power. Um, and so we're redistributing it from, you know, we have all this power of, like, people of color, they don't have much power, so we're taking us down a notch, but... In doing so, we're bringing them up a notch. And because we're so used to having all this power, losing it feels like, oh my god, all these people, they have so much power over us. And it's like, no, it's just that you're not used to having an equal system. So something that Dory Turnstall brought up in something I was reading by her um, was that you can use graphic design to help be innovative, to help people... For example, there's a student at OCAD whose name is um, Tucker McLaughlin, and they took this um, very inaccessible document um, that is so, you know, shapes the lives of Indigenous people in Canada, which was the Indian Act, I believe, and they took that and they turned it into this new book that was super easy to read, super accessible, and they also used um, graphic design to highlight all the pipelines that had gone through indigenous land. So there's stuff like that. But there's, of course, the other side of this as well, that so often, especially in social design, we have this idea of like going in and almost like as missionaries and going in to be like, oh, we're, we're so innovative in our Western way. And we know so much that you don't know. And so we're coming here to help you with our innovation and make, you know, your situation so much better. And that is very dismissive of traditional ways of thinking. So that's something that we need to stay away from. Um, and you can kind of stay away from that based on things that I brought up in my last video um, with the Design Justice Network principles that you can look at when you're designing something. And that's just basically like looking at what harm can you possibly cause um, and trying to avoid that. So the next big thing that we're touching on is reassessing curriculum and that is looking at what we teach in schools but also what we're teaching in you know like books and articles and stuff like that what we're prioritizing and obviously if you've been to design or art school you will probably know unless you have like some, unless you have Dory Turnstall as your dean, you have this very white, very Eurocentric, very American system of learning. And it's, it's basically the things that you're learning and the conditions that you're learning under. It's very Eurocentric, American, Eurocentric, white um, way of thinking. And I can tell you personally, so I have been to um, University of Toronto. Um, I studied 
Um, well, I studied English and film there, but I took a bunch of art history and art courses. I took design courses at OCAD Continuing Studies, and then I took um, graphic design at George Brown College. And I can tell you in probably one of those courses, I specifically remember learning about people of color that were artists or designers. I learned about Kahinda Wiley, who is a painter who looks at basically decolonizing painting as he takes paintings that are in done in the old style, like the like old masters. He'll take black people off of the street and he will literally use them as models in this old master style. So he's working on decolonizing, you know, these very white historically and Eurocentric paintings. Um, and then there was also, I learned about Kent Monkman who does a very similar thing with indigenous people. And he puts indigenous people in um, situations of power and he puts them in places that they would have been in the old style paintings. But those are the only two people that I can literally think of that you know, look at decolonization, but are also like even people of color. In the design history course that we had to take, the only thing I really remember like that was really diverted from, you know, the typical Eurocentric like things that you learned was constructivism, which is Russian. So it's not like this broad thing. Like I didn't learn about the Harlem Renaissance or, you know, stuff like that had people of color in it. And there are, you know, art movements and design movements that have that. And it's also just thinking of, do we have to look at design in a, in a chronological way? Do we have to look at design in a way that, you know, confines it to specific movements or periods? Why don't we look at it through, like, through location? Learning has always been a tool of perpetuating colonization. And that's been through the curriculum and it's been through who gets to teach and so diversifying the curriculum and diversifying who gets to teach that does help for sure but we also have to like unlearn so much of what we have learned and that's not to say like oh forget about like swiss typefaces um but it's basically to say like forget about the superiority that comes along with that learning that puts it like, oh, Swiss type faces are the best because that comes along, I think, with what you learn because what you are exposed to um, style wise is what you, you know, your taste becomes. And so if you're not exposed to all these different diverse ways of practicing and all these diverse styles, your, your preferences are going to, you know, skew towards what you've historically known to be good. So I'm going to read a quote here. So I'm going to read a quote here. Um, it might not be a direct quote because I like copied and pasted. So I don't remember if I like changed anything in this. But here we go. And this is from Ahmad uh, Ansari. So he said that to decolonize design, academia would have to embark upon the unlikely project of not only including the presence and voices of scholars from outside it, but more importantly, perspectives and alternatives that have the potential to destabilize and undermine its very presence. So basically in saying that, he's saying to bring all these people in and change all the curriculum of everything, I mean, A, it's very unlikely, but it also would destabilize what we already have and it would call into question, like, is this the best way to learn? It's not very accessible um, and it's very stuck in its ways. And it's very dismissive of people who don't have, you know, a certain level of education. One thing we need to look at is that through this system, we have basically denigrated things like craft and artisanal traditions to this lower pedestal um, so that it looks, we look at it as less than design and less than art. And that is also something that we need to unlearn. So we've set up this system of hierarchies and we need to do away with that. We need to build new systems that accept all people, all work, all places and view them equally. And we need to do away with homogeneity and embrace diverse practices and diverse thought. But as there always is a but, um, it doesn't mean that you can just use 
like any culture willy nilly and it doesn't, you know, like you can't just like, oh, like I'm just going to start doing stuff in this based on this specific tribe. Even if you know, even if you think you know so much about them and you've done all this research and you've lived with the tribe or you've lived in this specific place and you've done all, you did your PhD on this. Um, you are not that person that is actually from that tribe or from that place. So you don't know, you don't, it's not embedded in you. Basically I would compare it to people, they like to blame other people for copying their design style, which I think is, you know, sometimes it's like, uh, you know, like you've been doing this for a few years, you don't own that. Like it's not your style. Whereas I think cultures and places and peoples, they have this rich tradition of hundreds of years of doing this and it, like creating this and you're not a part of that you're an outsider coming in and learning about this from like in a third party kind of way so you can't truly know the meaning of it to someone and so if you really want to be respectful of these other cultures as I would hope everybody um, is wanting to be respectful what you can do is empower these people um, give them roles, give them, like, you could be like, maybe you want to be the art director. I think, I think that's okay. Like, I think you could say like, Hey, I want this specific thing in my spread. Let me hire a bunch of black artists and black models. And like, if you're doing a photo shoot or something so that, you know, like, Hey, this is what I want kind of, but they have the context and they have the knowledge to make that properly. Because if you don't do that, you are literally using, you are using these people by using their design, you are using people and that's not okay. Getting into why would we do this in the first place? This is like, you know, let's come back to it. Why would we do this in the first place? Because we're not white supremacists, right? Um, <laughs> we realize that other cultures are being left out and they are being denigrated to these other spots that it's not fair to let these people sit in this spot and view ourselves like up here but like i said you don't want to be like oh i'm inviting you in and you are now like you have fealty to me because i'm like whatever like that's perpetuating the same system like we need to break down this system but let's say like you are a white supremacist deep down we are keeping ourselves in a box when we only learn about white euro american designers and we need to break out of that because like i said you're not going to be stealing indigenous like patterns and putting that into your work but you can steal their knowledge and you can take that and bring that into the way you look at the world and the way you look at design and it can you know put your work at a different level and it can bring you know new meaning to your work when you are you know thoughtful of other cultures we just need to keep in mind that there's so many other possibilities out there and when we are limiting ourselves to like, I mean, it's like, it's not bad, but like looking at Milton Glaser and Paul Rand, like obviously they're two great designers, but like they may not be doing like the exact same thing, but in the global world, they're doing very similar things. And you want to look at all these different things because it can maybe like inspire you to do something different in a different way. Like I can tell you, I am a huge fan of Polish poster design. And I'm a huge fan of um, a Kiko Sternberger. And so when I make movie posters, which is what I do for fun mainly, um, that's very much an influence in what I do. However, when you look at my work, you wouldn't be like, oh, that's by a Kiko Sternberger, or that is specifically from Polish poster design canon. Because it's obviously like my work. It's kind of like that. Like you can have these like little influences of like, oh, I like how they 
incorporate like these textures or something and you could be like maybe I want to include textures maybe not use that specific texture um I mean that's probably a bad example but you know what I mean <laughs> so basically all I want to say is it's all about learning about these other people and then unlearning all of the the bad stuff that we've learned and that's not to say throw everything out the window of you know by American designers or by European designers that is to say throw everything out the window that you think and associate with that because I think we put them on levels and we put people in categories that we shouldn't be and so I just really encourage people to think in different ways see in different ways embrace other cultures embrace other people and things will be all nice and dandy. Um, that's pretty much all I have to say today. So, um, and my camera's about to die. So, I just want to say thank you for watching this video. Like and subscribe, obviously. Keep on coming for more. There's more on the way. So, I'll see you next week-ish.